In today's video, I want to take a look at how to dynamically allocate a multi-dimensional array. So we know that a multi-dimensional array statically allocated looks something like this here. So right, we have an array that is uh, of size three by three, and then what's happening here, we have basically a one big array that holds all the other three small arrays. And each of those uh, arrays are have three integrals in them. There's one crucial thing to realize in all this, that in this array, in this multi-dimensional array, there's no pointers involved, right? If I try to print out its size, so if I say, let's say print f percent LLU backslash n and have here size of array, if I run this program, you'll see I get 36. And 36 is really, uh, if we divide by the size of int, which is four, we're gonna get nine, nine integers. That's exactly how many we have here. You'll notice there's no extra space occupied by, um, by pointers. So if we try to visualize the way the memory is allocated for a statically allocated array, it's really a just a very big blob, right? Just a square. And this is the whole array, I suppose. And inside of it, there is actually three more arrays, right? So we have one array here and then another array here and then another array here. And inside each of the array, there is an integer, right? So another box, let's say. And well, this is how the array is in uh, memory. And suppose that these are uh, contiguous places in memory. They're not in a 2D plane because, well, addresses are just a number. So here we would have, uh, let me actually get a bigger font for it. That's probably good enough. So this is one and here we have two and then we have three and then one, two, two, three, and one and two and then three. Uh, here, come on, here at the end. So in reality, we only have a box that contains everything there is for it. And when we try to get its, uh, let's say, the address to that uh, array, we simply actually just get an address to one of these boxes, where, whether it is in the an inner box or it is the outside box, they're all contained inside of each other. But when we dynamically allocate it, we cannot really have this structure. I already made part of this video that you can check up top. And at the end, I was talking about how you can dynamically allocate a multidimensional array. Um, so to start off, you would have to first have a double pointer if we were to implement it in such a way that we can index it with two indices, okay? Uh, so let's just comment this out. And if we do that, and we start with a pointer of double pointer, so int double pointer array, then we know that this is already um, defined and it's been allocated. So there's space for this address, not where it points to, but for this uh, address, for this pointer. Right? So we are gonna have to draw a box for it in the visualization of it. So go here and we simply just draw a simple box here, right? And with this double pointer, what we want is, well, whenever we say array of zero, for example, we want to get the first inner array, this guy. When we say array of two, we want to get this guy, right? And when we add zero at the end, we want, of course, uh, the first element inside the third inner array. Okay, so let's first tackle the first problem. We want basically array of zero and array of one and array of two to give us another array. That means that whatever we're pointing to has to be an array. So in here, this guy really points to an array. We have here a simple arrow. This represents the pointer. Let me actually make it a bit more obvious. Okay, so this is an arrow that should point to an array and we denoted an array uh, by just marking with a rectangle here. So this would be our array. And what are the elements of the array? Well, the elements of the array, since we are, we want them themselves to be able to do, to get the first, the second and third element on them using this second index, 
they are also going to be pointers. So in effect, we're going to have the first pointer here, the second pointer here, and the third pointer here. And they themselves are going to point to another array in which we actually hold the numbers. So in here, what we can do is just drag an arrow, not a very straight one, but it's an arrow nonetheless, that points to a to an array. I'm going to actually have it on the vertical axis, but uh, that doesn't really matter. And here we can uh, have three boxes, which represent the actual numbers that we want to store in this uh, in this setup. So in the end, we're going to have something like this. So uh, this original pointer points to an array of three pointers. In here, pointers are basically just boxes with an arrow at the end. And each pointer points to another array, but now this array points or has integers. Now let's try to actually implement this in our code. Okay, so we started with array here and we should allocate space for it. We just say malloc of, well, we want, what do we want here? We want integer pointers and we just want three of them. You can change this number to whatever you want. It's not uh, set in stone. And now next up, what we want is to actually allocate space for each. So, so that each pointer points to a dynamically allocated place in memory. To do this, we're going to have to iterate over each pointer here. So I have a for loop. And let's actually define here i, i equals zero, i plus plus, all right. And then here we're gonna have array of i this time. So array of i is each of these boxes. And now they don't point to anything. They just have a an arrow that points to nothing. So we have to change that to point to a dynamically allocated place in memory, which is malloc of size of int, not int pointer. We allocate an array of integers, not of pointers. And right now we just have three integers in that, right? We have one, two, and three. Again, you can change this as well. It doesn't have to be the same as this guy. That's uh, your choice. Okay, so this is how you can create this structure in memory and that is dynamically allocated. You cannot really replicate this structure that we have with arrays unless you have just one single uh, array and you don't index it with two indices. Okay, so in this case, this is the only way to do it for dynamical allocation. And of course, to actually set each element, uh, you're going to have to manually do this with array of zero and then array of zero. So the first element in the first list is going to be one and uh, the first, the second element in the first list is going to be two and you get the gist of it. So on and so forth. You can probably do it with for loop or usually if you need these types of arrays, they are pretty big. They don't fit inside the uh, stack memory. So you'd want to have them dynamically allocated and uh, you're probably going to automatically initialize them. All right, there's one key difference. So as I said, the structure is different, but also the space, the memory it takes is different because as you can see in this overview, we don't only have numbers, right? In this overview, we only have numbers. We only literally have numbers. Well, they are grouped. They have, they are in boxes, but they are just numbers, no pointers. But in here, we actually have uh, pointers besides numbers. So what's the size of this multidimensional array? Well, first we have the numbers, which we know it's four times nine because there are nine integers and each integer is four bytes. That would be 36. And then we have, well, first we have this pointer here, which is plus eight. Usually it is eight bytes. If you're on a 32 bit machine, it's just going to be four bytes. That's one of the main differences between 32 and 64 bits uh, that the pointers are larger. So here we have eight bytes. And for each pointer inside this array, we also have eight bytes. So that's going to be plus three times eight bytes. And as you can see, that's more than 36. It's actually 68 bytes in uh, total. So this is much bigger than 36 bytes. And uh, well, this is only for 
to the arrays, right? Here we have basically for every single line, we have eight extra bytes, right? So for this line, we have one, um, one pointer, which is eight bytes, and for this one as well, and for this one as well. And at the end of the day, we also have another one uh, out here. But that's sort of for any array. So if you have a one dimensional array, it's just eight extra bytes just for that one pointer that we need to store somewhere. But for this 2D array, it's going to be eight plus eight times however many subarrays you need in that level. And of course, for 3D arrays, each of these numbers, remember, they're going to be a pointer, right? So this multiplies. So you're going to have to, it's going to be more and more costly to actually uh, have more dimensions to your arrays, to your dynamically allocated arrays. OK, so now we, we still have this code that says um, print of the size of the array. If I try to launch this, will we get the size that we calculated? Well, not really. We are going to get 8. That 8 is just the size of this double pointer. So that's sort of to be expected. But then how do you get the size of that array? Well, you can't really get the size of the array other than actual calculations like we did here. So we, you could actually calculate the size of the array and then iterate over the first level of the arrays and then add on all the pointers. But then you're going to have to say something like three times size of int. So it's going to be again, it's going to be something like this plus size of array of zero times three. That's for the pointers and then plus size of int times three times three. So that would be the formula for calculating its size. If we try to run this, you'll notice I'm going to get 68. That's the expected result. And of course, to free this uh, this array, what you simply do is the opposite of what you did what you did up top. So instead of first allocating the array and then its subarrays, you first deallocate the subarrays. So you say not array of i equals that, but free of array of i. And also don't forget to set it to null once you freed it, because it's easier than to debug. And of course, after you're done with that, you just say free of array and uh, array equals null. Something like this. If you do it backwards, well, there's an issue because uh, you see, if you do it like this, well, you free the array, but then you're trying to dereference it here. And that's just going to probably give you an error. Or if you're lucky, it's going to work. But uh, sometimes it's just not going to work and you're, you're not going to know why. So it is important to just do it in the opposite order in which you allocated them. So first deallocate the subarrays and then deallocate the uh, outer arrays. And this applies to any sized array, not just uh, to the arrays. And that's really all there is to it, to multidimensional. And that's really all there is to dynamically allocated multidimensional arrays. Man, that's, that's a mouthful. Um, I hope you got something out of it. Uh, if you do have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. And I do recommend that you actually watch the other video on multidimensional arrays, where I take a look at another way of storing multidimensional arrays. It doesn't actually uh, have you create pointers to pointers to pointers to pointers. It, you just have one pointer and then you index it in such a way that um, it sort of works almost the same as uh, as a multidimensional array. And it's also more memory efficient. All right, take care. Bye.